Ongelooflijk, ik heb Jezus gevonden en nog tijdens mijn leven. Ted Neely, ik heb nou jaren geleden zijn film gezien en hij is er gewoon nog. How are you? I am absolutely fantastic. Yes. I'm having the time of my life. First time in this country. Really? I love it. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, what do you know about Holland? Only that it's the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> Only that the people who live here are the nicest and kindest and most gentle people in the world. And I'm finding that out for sure. <laughs> I've been a familiar face throughout my life. Oh, thank you. And finally I meet you. But my first recollection of you, of course, is the movie. Yes. I can remember that people were picketing in front of the movie theater, protesting against your movie. Yes. Um, how was the reception when it premiered in the United States? Exactly the same way, mm. except possibly even more so. Uh -huh. Simply because it was a, a very successful album, soundtrack album. And when we did the uh, world premiere in New York, people came from all over the country protesting that we were being blasphemous uh, <laughs> yeah. regarding the story. What, what, what were they opposed to? First and foremost, the title. The they title. didn't like Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh -huh. To them that was blasphemous, you mm -hmm. see. Which is fine, I understood that. Uh, because they hadn't seen it, they'd heard the music of course, they had not seen the show. Mm. And each night when we would go to the theater to get into the, to do the performance, we would have to push through the picket lines yes. to get in the building to go to work. And I would say, have you seen the show? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's blasphemy. We, so I would ask them to come in. Please, come in as my guest. Watch the show, stay after and talk to me, tell me what you don't like. Maybe we can address it. The people who came in after the show, we love the show, it's fantastic. <laughs> Were you reserved yourself when starting Jesus Christ Superstar? Oh, absolutely, yes. yes. What, 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 what was your fear? What was your hesitation? Well, actually the fear was of, a, of acceptance or acknowledgement of what we were there for. Because I grew up in Texas, in America, small town, religion everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I had a deep set religious background so I could understand how people might take issue with the fact that we were doing something from the point of view of Jesus as a man. Mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth before he was became the Son of God in essence. When he was walking on the earth as a man. And people weren't ready for that at that point. Until they heard the music and saw the show. So I was frightened at being, who knows, they might decide, we don't want this guy. You, know, you, you don't know what's going to happen. But I, I, instantly when we got a chance to communicate, everybody loved it. Only a few days ago, I found the movie Vanishing Point, and you were there playing as a singer, as a Jehovah's uh, witness. Those things happen, you know. You, <laughs> you, you, Was that your debut? No, I had done other mm -hmm. things, I, yes, but nothing you would even notice, you know, uh -huh. in, the, in the crowd, yes. so to speak. So when you get started in the business, you know, you take, you got to pay the rent, you yeah. know, you got to do what you have to do. So I was honored for anybody to ask me to do anything at the yes. time. But you set the tradition of Fast and Furious. Well, so they say. <laughs> it was, this was Fast and Furious part zero. Mary, <laughs> mm, that is good while you prattle through your supper. Where and when and who and how. Before you were attached to the movie, you did the Broadway show. Yes. You were understudy or alternate? Uh, uh, understudy, understudy. Who was the, the, the main Jesus? A, gentle, a gentleman named Jeff Thinholt. Mm -hmm. Whenever the album became so successful worldwide, uh, Robert Stigwood, the producer of the album, along with Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber, decided to do just a concert to test the market. And they came to America and Canada. And it was a group of singers. There were no costumes, no sets, just a band and singers. And the person would step up and sing this song and another one that song. Mm -hmm. Jeff Thinholt was on that tour, as was Carl Anderson singing Judas, Carl, who was in the movie, yes, yes. and uh, they came in to do the show, and I was the understudy for Jesus, proudly to be in it, because uh, Tom O'Horgan, who was the original director of the Broadway show, uh, was the original director and co-creator of the show Hair, yes. and I had worked in that show for three years with Tom before, so he asked me to come and be in Superstar. Understand what glory is, understand. Stand at all. 
how long did you have to wait before you really were Jesus? Oh, I, it happened very quickly. Oh! Uh, only because of the, the strenuousness of the character, uh, someone getting in to sing that part. Mm -hmm. You know, the voice sometimes doesn't hold up. So mm -hmm. I got a chance to do it quite oh, early wow. on. Yes, quite early on. So and Jeff... The, the strange thing about it was, was whenever the first time I got a chance to actually step into the role on Broadway, uh, before the show, they always announce. They say, ladies and gentlemen, tonight the, the role played by blah, blah, blah. The role played by Jesus, by Jeff Fenho. Well, tonight will be played by... And you hear the audience go, oh. <laughs> Did you actually hear that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because they came to see whoever was supposed to be the, the star player. Oh. <laughs> So, so then the show starts. You where know, did you get the guts to uh, eventually perform then? Oh, I had no problem with you it. You had I, a hostile audience. But even so, I was a rock and roll drummer from Texas who was used to who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> playing in nightclubs where they throw things on the stage, you know, or you put wire in front of you. So, so you were prepared for I tomatoes. Prepared absolutely. <laughs> tomatoes, peaches, anything, you know, hot dogs. <laughs> so the, the great, the crowning moment though was whenever we got to the part of Gethsemane in the show. That audience, that audience that went. Oh, at the beginning, standing ovation after the song. Oh, really? So that was fantastic. You have made it a den of thieves. How did you win? the part of the movie. Mr. Jewison, without Norman Jewison, none of us would be here because he had the visual idea of making this piece happen as a film. He heard the music and he said, I wish to make a film of this. He wrote the screenplay as well. And uh, it was from a screen test. Carl Anderson and I had been asked to do the first American national tour of Superstar, and we happened to be opening in Los Angeles at the Universal Amphitheater. Mr. Jewison was in the city casting people for his film. Mm -hmm. He flew Carl and myself to London for a screen test with many, many other people. Yes. And it was what he saw in the screen test between Carl and myself, the relationship. He said, I saw a natural human friendship between the two of you, which was right, because we'd been friends yes. for a long time. And he said, that's what I wanted for the two characters in my film. And he said, it didn't hurt that the two of you could sing okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> But then you went to the yes. Israeli desert. That's right. We were in the Negev for a better part of a year. And Mr. Jewison had scouted all the locations prior to that. Yeah. Was uh, it cold or was it warm? Uh, it, this was, right now, is freezing cold compared to how it was there. <laughs> oh, really? It really? was torture. Mm -hmm. Desert every day. And the most valuable commodity of all was water, of yeah. course. Constantly people bringing around water because we had nothing. It's just desert. No trees, nothing. Just desert, you know. Were you nervous all the time or were no, you confident? Not at all. And that's Norman Jewison. Mm -hmm. None of us, except for Barry Denon, who played Pontius Pilate, mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Mostel, who played the role of Herod. They had both been in films before. I mean, really featured. <laughs> The rest of us never had. Uh -huh. see, we were all tenderfoot, so to speak. <laughs> and Mr. Jewison made us feel like we'd been working in the film industry all of our lives. I am sure I saw you with him. You were right by his side, and yet you denied. I tell you, I was never ever with him. But I saw you too. He looked just like you. I don't know him! But there was some someone special in your cast. Phil Tubus, yes. who later became Paul, Paul Thomas, the, the porn star. Yes. What were his ambitions at the time? At the time, he was a gentleman who walked around uh, like the pure hippie of the world, playing a flute. Mm -hmm. Said very little. He did his role as Peter. He was always present. Seldom made any noise at all. Mm -hmm. Calm gentleman. No adult movie aspirations he's, he's at all. He certainly didn't tell us about them. <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised when you saw him back uh, on some cable channel? Well, I, I didn't even know about it until uh, the person who actually discovered it was uh, Larry Marshall, and the man who played the role of Simon the Zealot. Uh -huh. You know, the uh, yeah. big song that everybody's in. Yeah. And he came in to Carl and myself and said, Guess who I just saw? <laughs> Only you're not saying we have the resources to save the poor from their lot. 
There will be poor always, pathetically struggling. Look at the good things you've got. The movie was a wonderful success. Oh. It shows on television still. each year, yes. maybe twice a year. Yes. And still you're Jesus. <laughs> well, that's a miracle in itself, mm. you see. Uh, because I, I will honestly admit to being 33. Uh, beyond that, but it's a miracle that I'm still in it. Yes. It's a miracle I can still do it, and I am so honored to be a part of it. <laughs> Changed my life completely, and it's fresh and new still to this day. Yes, but how many times did you sing Get Gethsemane? Oh, thousands. You know, thousands. Thousands. I've done the role itself well over 2,500 times. So. Was there any time a moment you got bored of that song? Never. Why not? It's, it's the piece itself. It's the way Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber looked into that personal relationship between Jesus and his friends. Everyone, from their point of view, before Jesus was crucified and then exonerated, everyone saw him as an outspoken man, peaceful man, you see. So that's what Norman Jewison wanted to play up in the film. Yes. Not the, not the, the shall we say, savior of the world, a person who was in transition in his life, knowing full well he only had seven days left to live. No one else knew that. And he's trying to reason with himself and his father if he's done his job. Mm -hmm. Please let me stay alive until I at least finish what I do. And the question why, always why, why, why? Just like we go through that every day. What am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Should I do something differently, mm -hmm. you see? So showing that doubt and concern. And that, I believe, is what made people relate so much more easily to the spiritual essence of the show. December. Finally, I'm going to see you live. I love it. I love it. I can't wait. And, yeah. and, and many, many people like yourself have seen the movie uh -huh. many times, but never seen the show live. And, and 1,000 other productions on stage. Yes, yes, there are always. Superstars always being performed somewhere yes. in the world, all the time. But what, what do you have in store for us in December? How's the that Italian production that's coming to The Hague? It's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And the main thing that makes it work is, the, again, the director. Uh, Massimo Romeo Pipero, who is the director and producer of the Italian production, uh, he, like yourself, huge fan of the film, so he pays absolute respect to the film and updates it with visuals behind us. So you see the simplicity of the the apostles and Jesus and Mary and Judas and Caiaphas and Annas and Pilate and everyone in the desert. The simplicity of that is not an overblown modern situation, but you do see uh, visuals, beautiful visuals behind us on the, the set that, that gives you the feeling of the film. Mm -hmm. Costumes are very similar to the film itself. We do it exactly as it was done, excuse me, and we also do it in English. No, I'm sad and tired. You told that in 1971 for, for Jeff, the main Jesus, it was a strain to yes. the body. Yes. How is that for you, 42 years later? None whatsoever. <laughs> it, it is just amazing. What's your magic potion? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I think possibly uh, believing in and accepting absolutely the character that you're trying to present to an audience mm -hmm let that character take you wherever you need to be mm -hmm. and listen to the audience they will guide you yes. and I talk to people after the show every night to mm -hmm. see what they think yeah. they give me their criticism or their praise they all tell me that they either found their faith through watching this film or they met a friend in line waiting to talk with me after the show and they become lifelong friends and sometimes get married mm -hmm. so it brings people together I will drink your cup Thank you for talking to us. My pleasure. We'll be there, ah. and I'm going to warn you, we'll be sitting row one, uh, Huyp and I, I. I love it. <laughs> and enjoying your performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Well, we'll see you soon in December. Yes. Before I change.